I built a Lego wave table that can display 3D shapes and is extremely satisfying. Here's how. I was inspired to make something similar to those pin toys I played with as a kid, but this was going to be much bigger and have around 1,000 Lego axles for the pins. So I built a Technic brick wall with a ton of holes and filled it up with a bunch of long Lego axles with stoppers. I made two separate mechanisms for this. One for the satisfying mode, Yo, what? and one that could display 3D Lego shapes that you put underneath. For the satisfying version, I made four pistons and offset their speeds in the programming, then put a silicone pizza dough on top. I couldn't find anything else, okay? That will make the satisfying waves more rounded. Then for the 3D shapes mode, I built four rack and pinions with more LEGO motors. This will all rise at the same time when triggered by the LEGO EV3. Then I built up some LEGO walls around it, programmed everything using the EV3, and we were ready to test. This thing is sick. The wave mode is super satisfying. Look at that squishiness. I even built up some LEGO shaped like pyramids and stuff for the 3D shapes mode, and boom, super cool 3D hologram table. I really always liked inventing things, which is why I built a Feastables bar launcher out of LEGO. Here's how. First, I ordered some Feastables bars from Mr. Beast. My plan was to build a handheld LEGO launcher that shoots the bars really far and also shoots money, because Feastables actually sent some money in the box. So I built a sturdy frame out of LEGO Technic and using some latex bands made a catapult that I thought would be strong enough and certainly not break in half. Then I built a simple release mechanism with one motor to launch the chocolate. I mounted a LEGO money shooter in the front and that was built using two motors and a LEGO tire that lowers onto the stack of cash to shoot it out at high speeds. And with that, I started putting on colored bricks to add some detail. Yeah, so the catapult broke. Actually, this was a blessing in disguise, though, because I used the same latex straps to make a slingshot that would actually shoot farther. For this, I had to upgrade the release mechanism using worm gears to hold the extra power. And finally, after 15 hours, I finished it. It actually shoots like 25 feet, and the money shooter looks super cool. Now I can finally shoot chocolate at people. I actually really like the milk chocolate Mr. Beast bars, which is why I turned my face into a real-life Lego sculpture. Here's how. First, I had my super kind sister take a 3D scan of my face using an app I found on my phone. I'll link it in the description. Then I used a free website called Tinkercad to turn my 3D scan into Lego bricks. That's me, guys. Can't you tell? I had to tweak the scaling here a bit, so I built a simple Lego ruler and measured it against my face. After that, I got to building. The nice thing about Tinkercad is it generates layers, so all I had to do was build each one and fix some minor details, like my ugly nose, and these lips that I tried to make, but then realized it looked like something out of a horror movie. It took a few more hours to build with different colors, and I used some special round pieces for the eyes, which are totally green and not blue. This is like the stuff from Nightmares. And finally, I tried to scare my incredibly kind sister. Come look at it. Come give it a kiss. Bye. You're so kind. That didn't really work. So I asked some YouTubers what they thought. That is next level legendary. Yikes. I honestly don't know what to do with this now. Maybe I should set it on set behind me so the autofocus automatically goes to it every single time I'm trying to shoot thumbnails. I built a Lego toothbrushing robot for Dental Digest. First, I built a mechanism to make the toothbrush actually scrub. This was super simple, I just used a rotational to linear actuator mechanism with the Lego gear. Then I attached two toothbrushes back to back, so when I build the robot arm later, I won't have to program it to articulate as far. Then I built a disclosing tablet launcher. This has a conveyor belt that drops one disclosing tablet into a Lego catapult, which when triggered by the machine, throws a tablet oh, into your mouth I got it. so you can see how well you brushed. I also added a mouthwash shooter by building a Lego pneumatic pump that pressurizes a water bottle and shoots mouthwash out of the robot arm. So now we know that it works. Speaking of which, I then made a really, really simple Lego robot arm. It only took me like 12 hours. So then I attached the toothbrush to the robot arm and built a super cool base for the machine. And finally, I tested it before sending it to Dental Digest. And it was pretty awesome. I just had to fix a couple things, but it worked pretty well. This is so cool. Make sure you check out Dental Digest's video to see why. This week, I built a bionic Lego hand that copies me. Here's how. First, I built four mechanical fingers and a thumb. These are each designed so that when you bend the joint at the knuckle, the other joints on the finger also bend. This was inspired by mechanical fingers that cosplayers use. I've made a simple code which essentially just turns the degree of rotation from the gyro sensor into motor degrees turn. Guys, that is so awesome, let's go! I then attached each finger to a motor so that they could each bend individually. The plan was to attach five LEGO gyro sensors to my fingers on a glove I could wear, and then each one would send a reading to the corresponding motor on the LEGO hand. Look at that, guys. So that any gestures I did with the glove would be translated to the robot. Then I built it into a cool LEGO box with a hole in it, made some genius secret code, Stop, stop, stop. and finally tested it. You slide your fingers in. Yo, guys, look at that, that's so cool. That's awesome, yo. Like so, like a point? That's super cool. The fingers each move independently, and apart from a few mechanical issues, it works pretty good. Also, if you're wondering, no, it can't pick things up. Last year, I got shot in the eye with a toy blaster, so I decided to build an automatic eye protection helmet out of Lego that can sense when projectiles are coming. 
The first thing I did was to build up a Lego helmet. I did this by connecting different size plates together using these special Lego joints. This is a technique I like to call polytexture, and it was first used by Nick Brick to build a Lego helmet. Then I fitted it to my head and worked out how I was going to predict when projectiles were coming. I ended up using a Lego sound sensor and coated it so when it hears a loud pop, the motors controlling the eye protection would flip into place and protect you. Wow. So I built the protective goggles out of clear Lego panels and finally tested it on a mannequin. Danger. Do not do this. Don't be stupid, guys, and don't do this at home. <laughs> this thing actually works. I was so excited, I actually put it on and used some poppets on my table to simulate when one of my inventions snaps or blows up, and it worked fantastic. It even has a special mode I'm still working on that's directional, so when he hears a louder sound on one side, the two eye protection flaps flip down on that side. And this just goes to show you, you should always wear eye protection. This week, I turned the Lego Batmobile into a tank. Here's how. First, I had to build it. The Batmobile has 2,049 pieces and took me about four hours to build. Also, shout out to the designers at Lego because this thing is beautiful and super accurate to the movie. Now to completely ruin it. I built up a super sturdy frame to mount under the Batmobile and added four super motors I built to combine the power of multiple motors into one and hopefully make this thing just a little more powerful. Then I attached all the different motors to IR sensors so it could be remote controlled. I put the left side motors on the red channel and the right side motors on the blue channel. That way you can steer it by pushing up one side and pushing down the other. Then I installed the treads. This was probably the hardest part because once I got them on, they kept coming off and getting tangled. But finally I got them to kind of work. Then there was only one thing left to do install the Batmobile. It was too heavy. Turned out the motors weren't strong enough and it only worked on hard floors. But it still turned out super cool, had a turret on the top so it could shoot Lego balls and absolutely destroyed this Lego wall. Follow for more. This week I built a fully functional Lego flight simulator. Here's how. First me and my friend Christian designed a Lego biplane using a bunch of slopes and then I put a Lego motor inside of it so we could control the speed of the propeller. Everything in the simulator was going to be controlled with the Lego motors using a simple mimicking code so when one motor in the controls turned, the motor in the plane mechanism would follow. Then I built a mechanism for the plane. This didn't end up working at all and I ended up rebuilding it over and over and then it just broke into a million pieces. I was at my lowest. I had no idea if this was going to work. The code wasn't working, everything was going downhill. But I wasn't about to give up. I called my engineer friend and asked him for some help with the code, and we finally got it to work. Then I had to design a mechanism for a super complicated joystick. It works by reading the output of two motors and telling the plane which way to move. Finally, after more than 11 hours of building, I had a working LEGO flight simulator. And it was actually really fun. The joystick controls how the plane is oriented, and the throttle controls the speed and sound of the propeller. There's just something about the feeling of inventing something and it finally works. That's it, goes side to side. And, uh, follow for more. This week, I built a LEGO Warship Simulator game. Here's how. The first step was to fill up a giant tank with water. Then I had to test a bunch of LEGO propellers in the water to see which one worked the best. I ended up using a custom wide propeller because it worked way better than any of the official LEGO ones. Then I had to build the target system. The goal of the game is to shoot down the targets while navigating your boat through the water. So I built those up and then realized my resetting mechanism wasn't actually going to work. So instead, I installed a Lego button sensor behind the target, and when you hit the target, it's supposed to make a sound like this. Oh, it's not strong enough still. That didn't end up working either. Then I had to build the boat and the missiles. This was pretty easy, I just built a simple mechanism that can launch four missiles and launches one each time you hit a button. Perfect. Then to make the boat move, I just built a gear rack in the water and then used some special code to make it move side to side when you turn another motor, which is attached to a wheel. Big thanks to Anton's Mindstorms hacks for the code I used here. Then all I had to do was put it all together with some basic controls and I had a working LEGO warship simulator. And honestly, it was actually pretty fun. Hey. This week, I built the LEGO robot to cheat on mobile games. You see, it all started when I texted my friend Jaden and bet him I could beat him on the mobile game stack. The plan was to build a LEGO robot that sits just above my phone and taps the screen at the perfect time to stack the boxes and get the highest score. So I first built a LEGO rotational delinear actuator and attached it to the LEGO Mindstorms motor. Then I attached a wire to the end that I could hold onto. This would trick the phone into thinking it was my actual finger getting the high score, when in reality, it was my fake Lego finger. The next step was to find the sweet spot and the speed of the robot, so it would tap the screen in the perfect time and not make the blocks fall off. I couldn't find the right speed, so to make it easier, I added a gear ratio to make it spin slower, and then I just boosted the speed of the motor. Finally, I found the right speed. I've kept it a secret here, because cheating is bad. He started out strong, gaining a whopping 61 stacks on his first turn. Attempt 2, he had 71. This was his highest score, even after his third attempt. Lego Robot vs. Human. It was all up to my amazing programming skills. Please work. Oh no, it already messed up. Don't cheat, guys. It's not cool. 